check it out. You got yourself a steel FS111R. Great choice. 1.4 horsepower, solid steel drive shaft, professional commercial grade string trimmer that's going to give you a long life. Hey guys, as a homeowner, this is something that you should have into the next decade or more. As a commercial guy, usually you're going to run this three, four, five years. I see some guys push them a little bit more. Maybe they needed to give up on them before that. But hey, if it's working for you and it has the power and it has the stamina to go all day, stick with it. What a great machine. Today, we're going to learn some of the basics on what you need to know, what you need to do to get the most life out of this. How do we get 15 plus years out of this machine? How do we make sure that when I pull it out of the shed in the spring, it's going to start? How do we make sure what to do to really enjoy it, to have a cool machine? So the Steel FS111R, again, this is a professional grade trimmer. It's got a ton of power. It starts well. It's smooth. It's a beautiful machine. We're going to start with some of the safety stuff, okay? And I, I sometimes breeze over this and don't make it a big deal, but this is throwing stuff. There's a lot of power behind it and you pick up a rock and you take a rock to the eye, that's bad news. So always wear safety glasses and sometimes you may even want to consider, you know, whether it's a helmet here or just a brush defender, something to protect your full face. And the other thing is ears. I'm out there for a long amount of time and they're not horribly loud, but constant noise, constant loud noise will damage your hearing. I'm starting to get there. My hearing is starting to go in my 40s now. And uh, someday I'm going to be in trouble. But I'm getting better at it about wearing my safety gear. So protect my ears, protect my eyes, uh, wear pants, right? Shorts. I know, you know, maybe hairy legs with grass all stuck in them is something sexy, but it hurts. <laughs> don't do it. Wear the proper stuff. Probably don't go bareback to you. Okay, we've got the safety stuff covered. Let's talk a little bit about the fuel, right? The first thing we should really know, now you don't have to worry about it because you bought this at Carl's Mower and Saw or, or your local steel dealer and they've already fired this up. They put fuel in it. But what's next? What am I going to do next? What am I going to run in this? This is a two cycle machine. It really isn't, but it is. This runs two cycle mixed fuel on a four cycle engine. So mixed fuel, always mixed fuel. And we're going to do that one of two ways. One is with the steel HP ultra or two is with the steel moto mix HP ultra. I can get this in several different sizes. These right here are for a one gallon can. I'm going to put one of these with one gallon of fresh ethanol free. If you can, ethanol free fuel. If you can't get ethanol free, at least get a stabilizer, get something like Startron to put in there to kind of compensate for the ethanol. I like this can. If you haven't checked out the no spill can sidebar, I kind of get distracted sometimes. Super simple to use, push the button and it pours. It doesn't spill. We've been selling these for, for years, 20 plus years, and we love them. Okay, back at it buy small amounts of gas, right? Notice I have a one gallon can. I want to go through my gas fast. I want to, I want to move through my fuel every couple months. If I can't do that, that's when I'm going to really consider this moto mix. And I'm going to use moto mix either all the time, or if you're not, or if you are a heavy operator, maybe this is what you store it with. This is what you put it away with. This is what you hibernate with. This is amazing stuff. It's 93 octane. It's ethanol free. It has a, uh, incredible properties. It is engineered for steel equipment. So let's, uh, let's put some fuel in here a minute and let's go through the startup process. See if I can not spill. I think if I go on the other side, dance around a little bit, I'll be better at it. I'm left-handed and I'm severely left-handed. In fact, so left-handed that when I run a chainsaw, I usually run it wrong and People call me out on not running a chainsaw properly. I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, so I've got some moto mix in here. Let's pop this lid on. What's the next step? I have my safety gear, it's fueled up, it's full of trimmer line. We know that we're gonna be able to go out there for a half hour, hour and go to work. How do I start this machine? Well, right here, here's the primer, okay? So this primer, I'm gonna push this four, five times. Can't flood it. 
Keep pushing it till you feel that fuel come through the primer. Basically what it's doing is it's sucking it up from the tank, going through the carburetor and back down to the tank. So I'm gonna prime it. I'm gonna choke it. Try to get this in a position where you can see it. I'm gonna take this choke and I'm gonna push in and turn it counterclockwise. The choke is now set. Hold on, stop. The choke is attached to this throttle trigger. As soon as I hit the throttle trigger, you hear that click? It shut the choke off. Really cool, but also can be really frustrating if you accidentally or intentionally squeeze the throttle cable, throttle trigger, because you're so used to it, you just shut the choke off. And you're gonna pull and pull and pull and pull and pull 10 times and it might start. And you're gonna be like, this stupid steel, it doesn't start. What is wrong with it? Well, you didn't have it on choke. So we're gonna push in, twist, put the choke on. I don't have to do anything here. It is always ready to run. It's a stop button or a momentary kill switch. I push it, it returns to start or to run. And then usually I'm gonna put this down on the ground. I'm gonna put my knee on it and I'm gonna pull the rope. That way I know that the, the head, whether it's a line head or a blade is not gonna be coming in contact with something. Today, I'm just gonna hold it up here so you can see. This is honestly how most people do it. You'll see commercial professional guys, right? They're just holding it like this. Who knows, how many pulls is it gonna take? Count with me here. One, two, three. Now, normally I would have said this machine probably would have taken two pulls to start, but because that was the first start ever, it took an extra pull on it. Okay, so let me re-choke it. Let me pull it again. Nice. I love the sound of that engine. As soon as I hit the trigger, it shut that choke off and that was key to helping it run, to keeping it running. All right, we know how to start it. Real quick, this here, you got a shoulder strap with it. It's gonna be able to hook right here. It is all folded up. That's gonna just take some of the weight, some of the burden of the weight of this machine off of your shoulders. You probably need to know how to rewind this head. Well, when you get done watching this video, go check out our steel how to rewind head. It's gonna show you how to rewind this steel AutoCut 25-2 trimmer head. Let's talk about maintenance. Normally I start at the top, but since I'm here by the bottom, let's start at the bottom. We have a gearbox. This gearbox takes grease. It should be greased about every 50 hours. If you don't grease it, you're talking about a failure in the four to 500 hour range. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. If I'm running the steel line head, I probably will go on the higher side of that. If I'm running a brush blade, it'll probably be a little shorter than that. So let's just grease it. Let's avoid killing a gearbox. And I take this plug, this screw out with either the T27 Torx that came with it or a 13 millimeter wrench or socket. So let's take that out. And I'm gonna use steel super lube right here. I can pick these up at, at your steel dealer. They're five bucks, somewhere right around there, six bucks, fairly cheap. Take the lid off. I'm gonna thread this in, screw it in, and then I'm gonna lightly squeeze it while I turn this head. And I'm gonna do that every 50 hours, or if I'm a homeowner and I don't know how many hours I put on, I'm just gonna do it once a year. And we're talking a little bit of grease, right? Think like toothpaste, right? unless you really load your toothpaste, toothbrush up. Okay, let's put this back on. Do I need to run a guard or a deflector? Proper terminology would be a deflector, but do I need to run a guard? Is that important? Safety, yes, but also more than safety is, is no, not more than safety. Alongside safety is the importance of the proper line length. So you see there's a cutter right here. And when I tap this head, it feeds out trimmer line, and this is gonna cut it off and keep it at the right length. Did you know that every inch of line that's longer than the set is putting this thing in serious danger of, of running too hot? So we add significant, I've heard somewhere in the 50 to 100 degrees of heat for every additional inch of line to the engine and clutch area, okay? That's not good. Heat kills engines, heat kills clutches. So Keep this on. I know some people take it off and they're gonna run their line that long and they think it's good. It does kill your machine. I see commercial guys often with failures and they're like, what? why did this happen? Dude, you weren't running your deflector. So keep that guard in place. Let's go up to the top. We know about fuel. We want good, fresh fuel. We want fuel that we're gonna go through often. 
We want to keep that good. There's an air filter under here. And I can quickly pull this cover off so you can take a look at it. This engine is a 31 and a half cc, I believe, engine on the FS111. If we did the math on the amount of air that's coming through this filter in an hour of runtime, you'd be blown away. Somebody do that for me and put, the, put it in the comments section. I'd love to, love to see what you come up with. So uh, 31, just do it with a 31 cc engine and see how much air is coming through this filter in an hour of runtime. This thing runs top speed, just over 10,000 RPM. So there's a, a piece of information you'll need to get to your number. It's a paper air filter. I can take it out. I can tap it out. I can see, can I see good light through it? Is it growing mold? Is there grass all stuck in it? Is it saturated in fuel? Is it wet? If it's that way, just replace it. They're fairly cheap. How often should I do it? That all depends on conditions and honestly, how often I maintain it, okay? If I do not perform any maintenance on this, the life of it, the cleanability of it is gonna be less. So let's spin this off here or spin it on. We've got the filter coming back on. We've got a spark plug we should take a look at every once in a while. They don't fail, they don't foul out very often, but why not? Nobody really wants to get to the middle of the year and have a failure of a spark plug and that's the reason it didn't start. So my spark plug is right under here Take this screw out on the top, pop this off, and here's my spark plug. Right there, you see my spark plug boot? This can be a little bit of a pain to get off, especially the first time. So maybe taking your screwdriver and putting it in and just slowly prying it up. And there we go, we got my spark plug boot off. I can pull that out. The tool that came with it right here, the small side will take that off. And I've got my valve cover here. Hey, 150 hours, roughly, it's time to take care of my valves. How do I know? How do I know I'm at 150 hours? Two ways. One, actually three, I could keep a uh, captain's log. Every time I run this, I write down exactly how many minutes. That ain't gonna happen. Two, this machine will tell me. It pulls, wow, it pulls very easy. But as these valves uh, wear in of sorts, as the springs change, it's gonna become harder to pull. It's gonna get chunkier. You're gonna feel more of the compression. When you feel that, bring it into your local dealer, bring it into Carl's Mower and Saw and get an adjustment made to those valves. The other way is this steel smart connector. This is something that's fairly fresh on the market. It mounts on the machine. It's Bluetooth to your phone and it keeps track of hours. It keeps track of maintenance. It's, it's a pretty cool thing. They're like 25 bucks, I think. So fairly cheap, inexpensive way to really keep track of your machine's maintenance. It also, based on location, will tell you where it was last connected to your phone. It won't tell you where it is if it's not connected to your phone, but it'll tell you where it last was connected to your phone. So maybe you left it uh, on the last job site and it'll help you find it. So the Steel Smart connector, kind of cool. Keep track of your hours. Air filter, no air filter, spark plug, good fuel. We do have a fuel filter in the tank. That does last a long time if you run good gas. Greasing the gearbox. Again, this is a professional trimmer. It's, it's a solid steel drive shaft. So I have the option of lots of heads. One of them being a brush knife, a brush blade. So I can run this triangular steel blade along with several other blades that'll go on there. In order to do that, you will need this large blade installation kit, this deflector kit. It's gonna give you a larger guard. It's gonna give you a barrier bar. It's gonna give you all the, the hardware you need to mount a blade on it. Real quick, how do I get the head off? Simply gonna take this pin, this came with it, but I lost it because it's so small and I had no idea what it was for and I chucked it. You can use a screwdriver or a nail that's gonna slide right up in here in the gearbox. And as I rotate the head, you'll feel it pop down. And now that gearbox is locked. Hey, something cool. There's like a magnet in here that holds this in place. So I don't even need to hold it. And it's gonna spin off clockwise, spin the whole head off, boom. And I can go through the process of putting on different heads. Quick tip trick, don't take this off. 
you'll be tempted to. You maybe can take it off to clean underneath, but always make sure it goes back on and goes on the proper way. We do see several times a year, and I'm sure your other steel dealers are, who watch this know what I'm talking about. This head gets spun on without this, and now you're in trouble. The head doesn't want to spin, and I really don't have a way to get it off. So it requires me taking the machine apart. So just quick tip, keep that in place. All right, what else do we need to know about the steel FS 111RX? 111R, this is not the RX. This is the solid shaft version. What else do we need to know about the steel FS 111R? I've covered most of it, but if I miss something, go ahead, break out your owner's manual. This is gonna tell you all the proper maintenance schedule, some of the th safety things that you need to know, and also that you got with it a brush cutter and string trimmer safety manual. Check out the full line of steel outdoor power equipment at Carl's Mower and Saw. If it's the FS111 that's right for you, awesome. Enjoy it, get the most out of it. If it's something else, stop by and let's figure out what you need to keep your property looking beautiful. Hey, this is Josh from Carl's Mower and Saw. Thanks for watching our videos. We're proud of the fact that we've been serving you with the best in outdoor power equipment since 1990. We're glad that you had an opportunity to sit down, watch our videos, learn something about an exciting new product that we have, something that interests you for your property, or really how to use your equipment to the best of its ability. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. We're excited to share more information with you. See you soon.